the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, is the hope of the world. The United States of America is the change of the world. Because the United States, people have hope to be free. In 1842, John C. Fremont was commissioned by the U.S. government to create an accurate map of what was already being called the Oregon Trail. As Fremont was preparing for the first of his five expeditions, he met the legendary Kit Carson aboard a steamboat traveling up the Missouri River from St. Louis. Carson became Fremont's guide, and together they embarked upon a great expedition beyond the barren Great Plains into the unexplored Rocky Mountain West. Today, the Great Plains can hardly be compared to the dry barren wasteland, which Carson and Fremont endured. Traveling through Nebraska in 1842, Fremont wrote, I have never seen anything which impressed so strongly on my mind, a feeling of complete desolation. Yet Fremont's expedition would soon discover the fiery narrows of the North Platte River, a mighty river which would someday provide irrigation for the farms and ranches along the desolate Great Plains of eastern Wyoming and Nebraska. Between June and August of 1842, Fremont set off on a journey to the headwaters of the Sweetwater and North Platte Rivers. During their reconnaissance, Fremont and a crew of seven launched an inflatable boat made of India rubber in the North Platte River. The crew anticipated 12 days on the water, but are said to have endured only three hours before entering the Hidden Rapids Field Canyon and capsizing their raft. Fremont wrote, to go back was impossible. The torrent before us was a sheet of foam and shut up in the chasms of the rocks which in some places seemed to almost meet overhead. The roar of the waters was deafening. We cleared rock after rock and shot past fall after fall till the boat struck a concealed rock immediately at the foot of the fall, which whirled her over in an instant. Three men almost drowned in the turbulent icy waters and most of the expedition books and records were lost. Fremont was criticized for being so foolhardy to launch a boat where the terrain was completely unknown and is reported to have endured a long cactus infested march back to rejoin his expedition clad only with the stockings on one foot. After losing their records in the fiery narrows, Fremont and Carson are said to have abandoned the path of the Oregon Trail to conquer the highest summits in the remote Wind River Range of Wyoming. After four more expeditions, Fremont and Carson would become recognized among the greatest Western explorers. Expanding the discoveries of Lewis and Clark into the remote wilderness of the Rocky Mountain and Sierra West. These fiery narrows were later named Fremont Canyon. This magnificent gorge was created over thousands of years of erosions of the North Platte River as it scoured through the geological remnants of the granite mountain uplift. 
It was reported that in many places a rider approaching from either side would not even see the canyon or know of the river below until he was within just a few feet of the perilous chasm. Near the spot of the Fremont's 1842 mishap, construction of a mighty dam called Pathfinder, named in the honor of John C. Fremont, began on a cold February morning in 1905. Crews using steam drills and dynamite began blasting a 13 by 10 foot diversion tunnel through 480 feet of solid granite. Two more vertical shafts each one 180 feet were blasted to the surface. These tunnels were used to divert the water so the river could be drained. The riverbed was then fractured and excavated upon which the foundation was attached to the solid bedrock. The Ghetto Series Stone Company of Denver began construction on the actual dam in September 1905. More than 65,000 cubic yards of granite was quarried from the surrounding canyon walls and hauled to the dam site. The granite blocks were first carved into shape and then lowered into a riverbed by cable gondolas. Every block was fitted with great precision and laid into the bed of mortar with more concrete layered into the tiny spaces between adjacent blocks. Over the next four years, 19 million pounds of cement together with an enormous amount of equipment and other supplies were transported from Casper along the same routes pioneered by Fremont and Carson. All supplies were hauled to the construction site by string teams consisting of two to four loaded wagons drawn by 12 to 22 horses. The fastest supply train between Casper and Pathfinder reportedly took one team three days. The longest trip took 76 days. The main structure of Pathfinder Dam was completed on September 1st, 1909. The concrete ladder was built on the South Canyon wall to provide access to the canyon floor by the dam keeper. In February 1912, five men working near the top of the canyon wall were killed when an overhead gondola cable broke and swept all five men to the bottom. Two of the men had no families in the United States and were buried in a small graveyard nearby. Reclamation along the North Platte River is responsible for the consistent year-round flow, which protects many critical habitats along the Platte River drainage. Pathfinder is capable of storing more than one million acre-feet of water 
and excess runoff is diverted across the breathtaking spillway, which drops nearly 200 feet over the canyon wall. Director F. H. Newell said more than three decades ago, there's probably no structure in the United States better designed and finished and more deserving of higher accommodation for the stability and absolute safety. After more than 100 years of providing irrigation, hydroelectric power, and habitat preservation, Pathfinder Dam is honored today among the National Register of Historic Places. The Pathfinder Falls are truly a sight to behold, but it's only part of Fremont's legacy. The United States is in a war that's going to define who we are as a people and as a nation that was imbued with the ideas of liberty and justice for all and for all colors, for all men, where justice is blind to all things except that which is right. Will it be freedom or will it be slavery? Will we take upon ourselves the governments of Europe go back to the founding principles of this country. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all men. John Charles Fremont became governor of California, U.S. Senator, and ran for office of President of the United States in 1856. Fremont's slogan was free land, free men, Fremont representing his quest for discovering new territories and his unpopular crusade against the slave trade. Fremont was narrowly defeated by James Buchanan, whose party warned that Fremont's agenda would result in a civil war. Sadly, it would be four more years before Abraham Lincoln, who honored Fremont in some 90 campaign speeches would become president of the United States and abolish slavery forever in America. For the rest of us who follow Fremont and Carson's footsteps, may we respect not only each other, but also our precious and fragile planet. Windy City Archives would like to thank Video footage, what it, what it would be like if you dropped off of that thing. <laughs>